Hey everyone, this is Chelsea, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about scrying for beginners. I have been so excited for this video because I do a lot of scrying in my practice, and I'm really excited to share my knowledge with you guys for this video. This is my knowledge that I have gained from multiple different sources, and any type of Wiccan, Pagan, or which may do this differently than I, but I'm just sharing with you guys how I interpret scrying and how I do my scrying sessions. So in this video, I'm actually going to join you how I do my scrying sessions. So that is at the end of the video, so keep watch. We're gonna hop right into it. We're gonna talk about what scrying is, the different types of scrying, and how I do my scrying sessions. What is scrying? So scrying is a type of divination that can be used to answer any types of questions or can be used to also connect to the spirit realm or the spirit world or also known as Summerlands. Um, it can also be used to just contact your ancestors, asking questions about yourself, asking questions about other people, asking questions in a whole nother realm. This is done by looking into a medium and picking up on different types of sensations, visions, signs, symbols, etc. Scrying can sometimes be considered the second sight because we use our third eye to scry and this is really going deep into yourself and into your subconscious so you're also answering and learning about yourself during the scrying process. So when we open up our third eye and we put aside our conscious, our daily consciousness, we are able to really look deep into ourselves, into our souls, and also we are sensitive to other different realms. So this is a really good time to do astral projection. You can do spirit work during this time. It's also a really good time to figure out questions about yourself. And when we do this, we are able to perceive more sensations, more visions, more signs, more symbols. And you are using your subconscious mind and your third eye during this time. So I recommend having a notebook so you can write down everything that you have seen, everything that you have heard, anything, any types of signs or symbols that are reoccurring during your sessions because this will help you see what signs, what visions, anything that is reoccurring and this will help you answer any types of questions that you have or give you knowledge on something that needs to be revealed. So like I said in the beginning, scrying can be used to enter a different realm or a different dimension if you do this kind of work. So you need to be careful and your environment is a big, big thing with scrying. You need to know how to protect yourself and you need to know and you need to have knowledge on scrying because it can become dangerous because you're opening up your third eye and you're be and you're letting aside your conscious consciousness, your daily consciousness, and this becomes a easy target for any type of negative energy that wants to enter. So know how to protect yourself and make sure to be knowledgeable before you do a scrying session or before you start scrying. So that's kind of the very, very, very basic um, definition of what scrying is. And now I'm going to talk to you guys about the different types of scrying methods. There's many different scrying methods, but I'm just going to stick with the ones that I know about. So the most common types of scrying is with a reflective medium. So water and crystal ball and also mirrors. But there are many more types of scrying than just those three that I gave you. So there is, there's wax, there's fire, there's water, there's clouds, there's smoke, mirror, crystals, oil, and eyes. So if you find yourself intrigued with any of those that I just mentioned, I recommend going into deep research mode and looking into those different types of methods because even though it's pretty much the same basics for a scrying session, every single one is a little is done a little differently. For example, with a crystal ball, you usually put your hands on the crystal ball. But for fire, you're not going to do that. 
So I would just recommend doing some research on each ind individual one if you're interested in them and just seeing how they're kind of different than compared to the rest of them. So scrying for beginners recommendations. So I practice scrying with my crystal ball which you guys will see at the end of this video which is also known as crystal ball gazing but I actually highly recommend beginners to start with water because water is usually easy ac like there's usually very easy access to water and water is very clear and it's easier to interpret visions or sensations through water compared to smoke or fire. It's a little more difficult with those ones and water is usually a very simple but common and powerful way to scry. So I recommend beginners to start with that. And if you do want to do crystal ball gazing, I I do recommend, not, not everyone would agree with me with this, but I do recommend buying a crystal ball first because pure crystal balls can actually become extremely expensive. So you want to make sure that you're actually intrigued and you actually want to do this with a crystal ball because crystal balls can get very, very, very pricey and glass is cheaper. And even though glass is handmade, Everything has a vibrational energy, so this will still work. So I do recommend, if you're interested in crystal ball gazing, to start with glass because it's cheap. So like I mentioned before, your scrying environment is crucial to a scrying session because you want to be protected, you want to have everything quiet, and you don't want to be disturbed. So I'll talk to you what your environment should look like, sound like, and etc. So what your environment should sound like. It should be quiet relaxing and comfortable. So if you're home, make sure to tell anyone at your home not to disturb you during this time if that's an option for you. And make sure that you just will not be disturbed. There won't be loud distractions or talking or loud TV and going on anything. And scrying takes serious concentration just and concentration is difficult just in daily life. So you want to be able to really concentrate on what you're trying to do. So you don't want any background noise, you don't want any really, really loud noises, except for the natural noises that you'll hear outside, or nature, or anything like that. That's fine. But just try not to get, like, screaming, or yelling, or talking, or conversation, like, in your scrying environment. So your environment should look like, should be organized, because if your environment is messy, your mind is instantly going to be thinking about how to pick it up. Your mind's going to be concentrated on the messy environment, so you're not going to be able to have a true concentration. So just be in a simple, well-organized area, and make sure that you feel comfortable in your space, because that's number one, you should always feel comfortable when you're doing a scrying session. So your environment should feel like, this is when protection comes in, you should feel comfortable, and you should feel safe. You should always feel safe in a scrying environment because your mind is in a vulnerable state and you want to make sure that you're safe. And this is absolutely necessary for every single scrying session. I know that people do scrying sessions differently, but you need to feel safe. You need to feel safe always. So I've been talking about this protection a lot. So how can I feel? How can I do these protection methods? So some protection methods that you can do. Smudge your area with some sage. Cleanse it with some sage or any type of incense that you want to use. And this will help banish any negative energy. You can surround yourself with protective crystals such as black obsidian or onyx or black tourmaline. And you also can make a crystal grid if you are into that type of practice. You can make a crystal grid around your area to protect yourself. You can do a protection spell before you start your scrying session if you would like. You can ask for protection from the elements, from spirits, anything. You can do protective chants to raise up that energy. You can do a protective spray. You can cast a circle and you always should ground yourself before each session because this will help you let go of all the energy of the day. So now I'm going to show you guys how I do a scrying session and I will be talking step by step what I'm doing um, throughout the next part of this video. So I hope you guys enjoy. Once your environment is prepared with all the things that you want, such as crystals, herbs, and incense, you can begin to ground yourself. You can do this by doing a grounding meditation, which I am doing right now. 
thinking of your energy flowing down into the earth and back up into you, kind of like a cycle until the energy you see is pure white. I am now smudging my area with white sage. Once I do that, I'm just going to breathe in the clear energy and imagine all of the negative energy disappearing and vanishing from my space. I use a selenite wand to charge my crystal ball with more intention and you do this by rubbing your hands together really fast and then putting your hands around the wand and imagining your intention sinking into the wand. Once I have put the energy into my wand, I circle it around my crystal ball to send more intention into my crystal ball. Now I do the same thing that I did with my wand. I rub my hands together really fast to build up that energy and without touching the crystal ball, I imagine that energy flowing into the crystal ball. Once I feel like that energy is complete, I finally put my hands onto the crystal ball physically. When you're ready, find a spot in the crystal that looks intriguing to you, and once you find this spot, keep your gaze on it and don't lose it. Now start recognizing any shapes, sensations, colors, visions, smells, anything that is coming to your mind. Then close your eyes and imagine a door in front of you. Open this door and close it behind you so nothing can leave. Pick up on what you recognize within this world. Pick up on everything you are seeing. When you are done in this world, make sure to leave the door and close it behind you so nothing can come out. Imagine your energy becoming your own again, and when you're ready, open your eyes. Shake your hands and smudge your area again to get rid of any unwanted energy that has come out of this session. And imagine any unwanted energy disappearing and vanishing. I'm going to be putting black obsidian near my crystals so my crystal can absorb the protection properties from this crystal. Now I'm taking another piece of black obsidian and I am going around each direction. So north, south, east, west. And this is my way of closing the circle. So I am just imagining each direction absorbing this protective property from this specific crystal.
in case there was extra energy that I do not want around in my environment, I am just brushing it away with my hands. Now I am just covering my crystal ball with my protective cloth, and that is it. Okay guys, and that's what I have for you for scrying for beginners. I hope you guys enjoyed me showing how I do my scrying sessions, and I hope that this helped anyone that was interested in scrying or that is interested in scrying. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this was useful for you guys, and I hope that this helped you gain your knowledge. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!